Welcome to the Sellernomics Podcast, where we share valuable tips and information in the Amazon and e-commerce space. Each week, we deliver the best interviews with some of the top Amazon personalities in the industry to help you grow your business. Today's episode is brought to you by Gatita, the global leader in FBA auditing and reimbursements. Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at gatita.com slash sellernomics. And now, here are your hosts, Rob Stanley and Lisa Kinski. Yay. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to today's episode of Sellernomics. My name is Lisa Kinski, joined by Rob Stanley. And today we have on a dear, sweet friend of mine. We'll just Lisa, this is my it. favorite subject. This I is know. my favorite subject. <laughs> I told this to Lisa a second ago. And she goes, oh, we're talking about chat GPT. I said, no, no, no. This is like an old school favorite subject. Today we got Steven Selikoff and we're talking about why Amazon sellers need to attend the Canton Fair. I had to go look it up and I've been attending Canton Fair since 2008, maybe possibly 2007. And up until probably about 2018, I think was the last time I went. Steven, welcome to the show. Uh, looking forward to hearing what you have to say about why Amazon sellers need to attend the Canton Fair. And I think we should jump right into this. So Steven, Excellent. what? Why don't you tell no, us? It's not just, it's tell not everybody just a little about this what Canton, Canton Fair. Is. Yeah. Yeah. The Canton Fair itself is huge. This one's going to be super huge. And for people who don't know what it is, the Canton Fair is the largest um, exhibition of suppliers in the world by far. Um, it's pretty old. It started in 1957 or so. Um, today it fills, well, I should say in 2019, it filled three buildings, each the size of an airport terminal. But during COVID, they built a fourth building, so it's even no. bigger now. Wow. It's uh, it's it's getting it's it's absolutely huge, and they are filled with suppliers and factories who have products to sell to you. It is so big that they can't all attend at the same time. So the Canton Fair is split into three week-long phases and each phase has specific products so uh, if you are doing a, a consumer electronics then you want to be in phase one if you're doing um lighting uh, you know the trend with those pretty fairy lights in people's rooms you want to be in phase one if you're doing um ear pods i've got a pair in right now you want to be in phase one if you're doing um, consumer goods, CPG, pet products, um, uh, home decor, fake flowers, um, kitchenware. If you're buying garlic presses, you want to be in phase two. And so on phase three, you've got apparel, men's, women's, children's, shoes. Um, you've got sporting equipment, camping equipment. Um, you've got home textiles. If you're doing um, uh, bed spreads and curtains. You want to be in phase three. So it just goes on and on and on the size of 217 football fields. And the number one reason is let's get beyond all of the, the hype of everything that everyone is doing selling products. The number one reason is you want to make money and it's going to be so much easier if you go to the Canton Fair. It's, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> and is this the first one since COVID? Did I hear that correctly? It's they the last one they had was in 2019. I'm assuming borders just reopened with visas. I mean, talk to us about getting into China for Canton Fair right now and the so that is over the yeah over the last few years they've tried a virtual Canton Fair. Um, it, it 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 was terrible. It really was. It's just no comparison. Um, so they, they opened the borders at the beginning of January. And the challenge for people with business visas is that those business visas were suspended um, just about three years ago, January 26th, 2020. So just, well, until recently, in order to get your business visa renewed, you had to make an appointment at the embassy. You then had to come in hand it off, they'll check it, they'll let you in, and they'll give it back to you in two weeks. That was very difficult for a lot of people. Meanwhile, 
Chinese citizens were going all over the world. And there was a lot of pushback from other countries. About 13th, the 13th of this month, China announced that they will once again honor the previous visas. So that's made everything a lot easier, but it's also made things last minute. So if you have a commercial visa, it still works. If you have an old tourist visa and it's still valid, that works. Or if you're like me that flew down to San Francisco um, to get online, I actually paid a guy to stand online 19 hours to get in on the last day of walk-ins, um, which I did. Uh, you'll have your visa like me tomorrow. But it is it was definitely not easy. They, they made you jump through the hoops. But frankly, all of that helps attendees to the Canton Fair this year. It helps for a couple of reasons. Number one, the hotel rates normally skyrocket during the Canton Fair. So they have not jumped up as high as they have in the past. Um, so that's really good. Second is there's going to be fewer participants. Um, and that actually helps us. So a friend of mine was there um, when during the SARS outbreak. And the first Canton Fair that he returned to after the SARS outbreak, um, as he described it, people were hungry. They were leaning into the aisles trying to make deals. Well, that helps, helps us. Anytime we can get products for less, that's fabulous. But in addition, there's been no Canton Fair for 42 months. They have products. Normally, when you go to the Canton Fair, you'll see new products you haven't seen before. I remember seeing these little monkeys that go on your fingers, these fing mm -hmm. um, um, fidget spinners, um, this little unique lights for Christmas that now you see everywhere. These are where things are debuted. And for 42 months, they have not been able to debut things that they wanted to put in front of buyers. And then lastly, the economy in China has slowed down. They recently um, reset their expectations on their GDP growth to 5%. A lot of that is driven by their factories, by manufacturing, by exports. So the government is encouraging these suppliers to make deals. That's a perfect storm. They, they, they're, they're hungry because they would be anyway, after, after like they did after SARS. Um, they haven't had a chance to show new products. And the government's saying, get out there and make deals. This unlike this is going to be unlike any Canton Fair before or after. And now we know there's going to be fewer participants. So suddenly you're going to be the most beautiful, you know, person at the ball and someone's going to come up and try to dance with you every five minutes. This is a great time. Absolutely. That, <laughs> I don't know if I go with that scenario, but it definitely is a good time to go. So Stephen, what about if people are kind of hesitant still about going and maybe they're just like, you know, I could get on Alibaba, still see all these type of things. Explain to people why Alibaba is so much different than go actually going to the Canton Fair and and why there's a benefit to going to the Canton Fair versus just sitting at home and, you know, thinking that you can find that same perfect item at the perfect price on Alibaba. So the Canton Fair is focused on people who are selling or exporting their products. In fact, as, a, as someone who is a manufacturer or a trading company in China, you don't automatically have the ability to show at the Canton Fair. You have to be approved, and that approval is based on the quantity of your exports. So you've got to be a serious player. And there are smaller ones there, and that's because a lot of these big players just turn around and they lease out their space. But you've got that gating uh, uh, to begin with. I know someone who lives in, in Shenzhen who is on Alibaba and he sells um, plastic protectors or whatever that material is for your cell phone. Every time he gets an order, he goes down to this large open market of, of uh, electronics in Shenzhen. He buys the stuff and he sends it off to whoever orders it. That's him. He lives in a one-room apartment. He is not a factory. But you can't tell that when you're on Alibaba. In fact, I've got a, 
a friend here in Seattle that's listed as a factory for over 20 years. I've got, I know someone who was in LA, now he's in Canada, same thing. You don't know who it is. When you go to the Canton Fair, you're face to face with your supplier. You're looking at their products, you're touching them, you're feeling them. You have the weight. You know what? I had a, a product a few years ago that was um, polar fleece. And I think most people know what polar fleece is. And uh, I sat down with, with the uh, factory owner. He went through what I was trying to do. And he suggested using flannel fleece instead. And I got to feel the two of them, feel how the flannel fleece, fleece was a much better choice at a much lower cost. You cannot do that mm -hmm. online. So you get to feel the products, see the products, examine them. You can actually take, look at one sample at one booth, walk a few feet, look at another sample in another booth, walk a few feet and do that for five or six boots. You don't have to worry about FedExing it, shipping it to yourself for, for examination. You don't have to worry about the time. You don't have to worry about the cost. And in a world where it's become more and more competitive on Amazon, if you're at the Canton Fair and you're looking at products and your competitors are not, then you're way ahead of them. And then, as I said earlier, it's all money. We want to save money. We want to make money. Um, when you're at the fair, when you're talking to suppliers at the fair, they know you're serious. Every single person I have taken to the fair have saved money. I've had people who have been selling for two, three years, um, and they've met their suppliers at the fair, or they've gone to their factories um, in China. And they've come back saying, well, we said the same things you said, and we save 30%. And this happens consistently. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to save money, you want to make money, you want new products, you want better deals, you want a relationship with your factory, you want your factory to meet deadlines. All of this comes down to, to meeting them in person. And there's no better time or place to meet them than the Canton Fair. Every single person who goes to the Canton Fair will come back and tell you that it has changed their business. But now we have people who've been who've come into selling, come into developing products during COVID. They never had this experience before. And for those people, it's going to be life-changing. You know, in the past, Rob, you know that, you know, you go to the Canton Fair and there's all sorts of parties and events and you're seeing all sorts of other people who are Amazon sellers. Now there's such a large percentage of people who have no idea what's going on. Um, it's it's going to be beautiful. I, when I bring new people there, I love seeing their first impressions. Their mouths drop open. They have no idea that this even exists. Yeah, it's absolutely okay. incredible sight. Let me tell you, four football, each of those football fields, approximately three to four stories of just nothing but products. And, uh, you know, like Steven said, they added a fourth one. Uh, Steven, I do want to ask you a question. Uh, I, I did this when I was kind of preparing for to go to a Canton Fair. Um, what kind of prep do you suggest for sellers before they go to something like this? Like I would always do a lot of product research because I knew, like you were talking about the different phases, there's usually a category of products in there. So I would kind of go and do some research on what products am I sort of looking for within that category? And I'd come with like a... a actually an iPad full of products I researched where my cost needed to be, that whole thing. Is that still something that would work or what do you kind of suggest? Absolutely. And before I talk about that sort of prep, I always forget to say some obvious things. I want to put it in now. One, um, get yourself WeChat. WeChat is the most ubiquitous platform in China. If mm -hmm. you're on WeChat, suppliers know that you understand Chinese business, you understand their culture, you take it seriously, get WeChat. Second is put that WeChat on a business card and bring a bunch of business cards with you, at least 150. Because in China, everyone exchange, well, we, they call it name cards. Everyone exchanges name cards. So when you meet someone, you give them your name card, you take theirs, just a quick hint. You do it with two hands. Yes. So you hold it like this. You look at theirs for a moment, acknowledge it. You can even do a, a slight bow and you treat it with respect. And they'll do the same with yours. So you get WeChat, then you put it on your business card. 
The other thing I always forget to tell people before you go there, get a VPN and download your VPN because you don't have, there's a lot of things you'll be blocked from, including Google. Mm -hmm. And Google becomes important when you're starting to evaluate your supplier. So when you're there, you want you can either go there and look for inspiration and say, I'm just going to keep my mind open, no plans. Or you can go there with a specific product idea or a specific niche in mind and so on. Um, first thing you should do is just as if you were doing a typical products requirements document. Um, and you can find those online and so on. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to understand what are you looking for? to do. If you're saying I'm going to be looking for, I don't know, a dog leash, um, that's great. Now you're very specific into a dog leash. But if you're looking for something that's going to help your dog say, stay safe when you're on a walk, maybe there's something new that's been developed that you don't even know about. There's technology things happening all the time. So your goal is not a dog leash. Your, dog, your goal is something that helps keep the dog safe when they're walking. Um, so understand that, understand who your, uh, who the, uh, the customer is going to be and, and understand what type of price that customer is willing to pay WTP willing to pay. If you go in with that, it doesn't have to be specific to a specific dog leash, but now you know what you're looking for as far as a, a PRD. And then there's a product spec. If again, you can download these, they're very easy. You can use an Excel spreadsheet. But basically, on the product spec, you build off of that PRD. You know what type of materials you're looking for, what price level you're looking for, and so on. And here's a deal. Uh, people always are surprised when I tell them that I tell people to get a 7x multiplier at least. And then what happened? We had all this problem with shipping. Prices went up and down. We had the Trump tariffs. That added on. And everyone with a 7x multiplier was just able to ride that out. I learned that because I started selling to retailers first, and I continue to sell to retailers. But just about a month ago, there was a front page article here in the Seattle Times saying that Amazon is now taking more than 50% um, of the money of their third party sellers. That's everyone who's selling on Amazon. So now it's exact same boat as retailers. So how do you get a multiplier like that. Go back to your PRD, go back to your product spec. You know what customers are willing to pay. Let's say they're going to pay $50 for, for an item. Divide it by seven. Now you know when you go through the booths and you're trying to source something, does this product cost seven bucks? If it does, mm -hmm. you're making money. If it doesn't, move on. There are thousands of booths, thousands of products. So if you can research beforehand, research it all out. Um, you can fill out a product spec and a PRD. Um, and Rob, as you mentioned, understand which phase you need to go to. Um, and there's lots of lists out there at the Canton Fair. So you're going to the right phase. Frankly, the very first time I ever went, I went to one phase. I don't think I've ever stayed to one phase since then. There's <laughs> always stuff to learn and to enjoy. Um, so go, stay multiple phases. China is a wonderful place. You're going to enjoy it anyway. So I, I love that. We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsor. And then I want to talk to you more about negotiating with suppliers and the importance of relationships in Chinese business culture. And you can't just go to them and say, well, I need it cheaper. So uh, let's go ahead and, and take a quick break. Did you know that Amazon probably owes you money for FBA reimbursements? Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at katita.com slash sellernomics. All right, you guys, be sure to go to katita.com forward slash sellernomics for that first 400 in free FBA reimbursements. Again, on with Steven Selikoff talking about the first Canton Fair in four years, 42 months to be specific. Um, so, so Steven, when you're talking about you know, evaluating your pricing, kind of the price points that sellers are looking for. And there's thousands and thousands of vendors to visit suppliers, factories. What tips would you give them for negotiation tactics? You know, because it's it's very important to be respectful and to build that relationship first. For first timers, what would you advise them? Well, first of all, I wouldn't even think about it as negotiation. You just want to have a conversation with your supplier. And the goal shouldn't be, oh, I want to 
squeeze them as much as possible, get the lowest price possible. Your, your goal is a relationship. And this is fascinating. So sociologists say that you can tell what a society values by how many words they apply to it. Like uh, someone told me that um, up north, there are like 41 words for snow and stuff like that. In the Chinese language, there is a word, guanxi. That means relationship between businesses, doing business as a relationship. We don't even have a word like that in English. But to them, that relationship is so important, so valuable, that they have a word in their language for that. So you want to build a relationship. And that comes down to um, getting to know the other person, understanding their business, their business understanding, they understanding your business. And the first step, of course, is being there in person. It, it is so, so powerful. When you have that relationship built, prices will be a lot lower than you expected. And terms will be a lot easier to come by. Uh, this is something that I think everyone knows in their gut, but they forget when they're talking to suppliers. The cost of a product come, for the supplier comes down to time, materials, and labor. That's how much that product costs them. I have a little panda bear here. It comes down to cost of materials, cost of labor, and the amount of time. And yet, every time people negotiate for products, the conversations about MOQ, where do they sell, and so on. That's not part of the cost of the, the supplier. That's what the supplier is listening to and making a decision on what sort of price are they going to give you. Are they going to give you the price of the person who comes off the street? Are they going to give you the price of their brother-in-law? Are they going to give you, you know, the family price? Maybe they're going to give you the family that they like price. They're going to set that price based on lots of things. And you just have to remember that that's not really based on their cost. Now, there are things. If you're buying, if you're doing um, uh, curtains, they're going to buy an industrial roll of cloth, and that big cloth is going to be a set amount of, of money. If you're going to do something in plastic injection, there's going to be the cost of a mold and, of course, a bunch of pellets and the time that it takes to uh, polish the mold, attach the mold, and so on. So they're not going to want to do a small order. But you have that ability to have a conversation, build that relationship, and then get the right prices for that. So number one, you start with that conversation. Number two, um, be yourself. You're, you're flying to China. You, you're taking a lot of risks. You're putting your money down. You're taking away time from your family. Why? Because it's your business. You own it. You're committed to it. And then if you sit down across from the owner of a factory and you say, well, I'm just a middleman. My boss is back home and he's going to approve this or not approve it. I'm going to cry if they doesn't. No, you're the owner of your factory. You're, if they're the owner of their factory, you're the owner of your business. And in China, that's good. Kings negotiate with kings. So you are the owner. Be the owner. Have that on your business card. Have that when you talk. Another thing is the more you know about your product, how it's made, um, what are the materials that go into it, the better. And here's a really sneaky trick, but it really works. One, if you don't know anything and you have time before you leave, get on Google, get on YouTube. There's a series called How It's Made. You can see how things are made and done. So at least you get a sense. But then as you walk around and you see all of these uh, suppliers that really have good potential, you really feel good about them, and there's one that's, man, you don't like them too much. Go to that one. Go to the one you don't like. Ask them all sorts of questions. They're going to think that this guy has no idea what he's talking about. And they're just going to, they're planning how much they're going to rip you off and so on. But you're asking questions. And in reality, what you're doing is you're learning. You're gaining information. If you have your spec sheet, you don't have information in there yet about different materials or alternative materials. This morning, I was having a conversation um, with a factory about a, a small piece we we're adding to a product 
and whether we should be doing it in ABS plastic or actually doing it with TPU because it has to hold up to the heat of the sun. Um, if you don't know these things, you're going to learn it from that map factory. And then once you have all that information, then you go to the good ones. And when you talk about, talk with them, keep your eyes and ears open. Shut up sometimes, which is always hard for me. <laughs> and listen, because they may have alternatives you never even thought of, which is exactly what happened with the polar fleece and the flannel fleece. So learn from them as well. You're in China. If you have a chance to set up a time to go visit their factory, do it. You're now going to be a prince in their eyes. Um, you will be so much further ahead of all your competitors who are sending off emails and talking you know, on WeChat from across the world while you're there in front of them. That changes everything as well. And lastly, and I've said this again and again, and people who believe it, who embrace it and share it with their factories almost always end up in a better situation. And that is when I sit and negotiate with a factory, my goal is not to squeeze them till they go out of business. My goal is to get to my target price. I figured that out at the beginning. When we know what customers are willing to pay, we divide it out. We know that, okay, we've got a 7x multiplier or a 10x multiplier. That's my target price. That's all I care about getting to. And I tell that. I tell that to the supplier. I tell them that I want them to make money. I don't want to put them out of business. I want them to do well. I want them to take their kids to Shanghai Disney. I want them to do well. I want to do well. And I want my customers to be happy. If all of us are happy, that's great. So we'll work together for that. There's a, um, there's a woman who came with us last time, um, October 2019. And when she first got to the Canton Fair, she was absolutely overwhelmed. Um, She's incredibly nice, incredibly bubbly, always smiling, not someone that you would think is very intimidating or comfortable when negotiating or anything else. But over the few days, she learned. She did it again and again. You will do it again and again. That experience, you suddenly can become easier. At the end of phase two, we went to a factory together. And we, she toured the factory. She knew what she was supposed to look for. So she did all that right. We sat down at this long table afterwards and started going through price. The fellow had the samples in front of him and everything else. So uh, she sat down. I was next to her. And across from us, the owner of the factory sat down. She got up. She walked around, got on the other side of the table. She sat down next to him, looked at the products, looked at her notes, and said, this is where we need to go. How do we get there together? And that's exactly what you want to be doing. You can do that when you're at the Canton Fair. You can do that when you're in person. You can't come around to the side of the table if you're doing everything by email. No, and then Absolutely. we'd be teleporting and, and everything would be so much easier. <laughs> well, maybe chat GBT knows a way of teleporting. Maybe. That's coming next. <laughs> Uh, there's a the couple, couple tips I want to uh, throw out there from things I learned when I when I went to Canton Fair. Uh, first of all, if you're if you're flying directly into the Guangzhou area, uh, go to your bank, order some of the currency ahead of time so you have some money uh, when you first get there uh, versus having to use a very expensive uh, currency exchange places. Uh, second thing I always suggest is carry a actual extra battery pack for your phone or iPad or whatever you happen to be using, maybe not necessarily a laptop. The other thing I do want to ask Stephen, uh, it's actually a two-parter and one of them will be really easy. Uh, language barrier. Uh, I always noticed that all the booths had somebody in sales who spoke English. May not be perfect, but definitely better than my Mandarin was. Uh, but the other part is when you get to something nowadays, I mean, it used to be a long time ago, you could go in, you see this great product and you'd buy it and you just resell it on Amazon. Well, there's hundreds of people looking at that same product and probably going to buy it. What's the approach if you see something and you're just like, I like that product. Should they be asking about, can we make this additional feature or this change to it? So it's unique. What's your kind of uh, take on that, uh, Stephen, when they're talking to some of these suppliers at the booth? 
So first, let me answer the first part of the question with the sure. language barrier. And absolutely, when you're at the fair, um, I don't speak Chinese. I barely speak English, and I haven't had a problem <laughs> in years. Um, then it's going to be relatively easy for you. Uh, anyone who is in a university student in the entire Guangzhou area or Guangdong area um, gets to work during the Canton Fair because they will work a booth for a phase, They'll smile, they'll translate in the next phase, they'll be in another booth. Um, and it's pretty funny like that. Where it's going to challenge you the most is the moment that you land in the airport because you'll get into a taxi and you're gonna tell them in English where your hotel is and they're gonna look at you saying, I have no idea what you mean, I speak Chinese. Always write down the addresses in Chinese, just print it off of, of whatever site you're using to book your hotel and everything else, print that out in Chinese, carry it with you, because when you get into that taxi, you give it to them, they'll know where to go. And then once you're in your hotel, they'll give you little business cards with their address and a map that you just carry with you from that point forward. It makes life a lot easier. Specifically in Mandarin or in Cantonese, Stephen? Mandarin. In Mandarin, Mandarin. okay. Yeah. Okay. Or actually what they call simplified Chinese is the technical um, okay. um, language that, that they would be using. So uh, there's something like close to 100 different dialects within China. It is huge, but you're going to be comfortable with, with uh, simplified Chinese on anything you have written down. So Now, you're in that booth, and um, I'm going to find something around here. Oh, here we go. Good. I was just in Western Australia, so I have a little quokka, a stuffed quokka with me. Um, so you're in the booth, and they've got little plush toys, and you want to make it different. What can you do to, to make yours unique from everyone else? Well, the first thing you do is you just ask them. These guys, if, there's a if they're a factory, they're living, eating, breathing stuffed toys. They know what's trending. They know what the next hot thing is and so on. So they can tell you we can do this type of material, but we can make it a squishmallow or we can make it turn inside out or whatever. Whatever is trending, they'll know. Now, maybe they haven't done it for a quokka yet or um, a, a, a llama or a sloth or whatever is a trending animal at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I, gosh, nine, 2019, one of the things that were just popping up was that some factories would take the bottom of the animal and they put a magnet in it. And then you take a little steel piece and the children could put it, tape it to their, mm -hmm. their clothes. And then the thing would sit on their shoulders all day long because the magnet and the plate. Most stuffed animals didn't have that. But if you talk to the factories, they all were aware of it and they all had the ability to do that just nobody had asked them yet. Mm -hmm. And then there's also, you know, all sorts of, they have op opportunities and options that is huge. You'll see it at their booth. You'll see it at someone else's booth and you can ask about it. I'm going to give you another tip while you're at the Canton Fair. Take tons of photos, tons of photos and do two things. One, if it's a booth that you're interested in, you want to come back to, Take a selfie with yourself and the people in the booth and hold up a piece of paper with the booth number. That's going to be great because now you have it on your phone. You can figure out who they were, how to get back to them. The other thing is take a notebook with you. Um, I actually, where's a, I got one here someplace. I was going to show you a plug because I had a book that, uh, here we go, on Amazon that actually is a notebook that you can use to track everything um, at the Canton Fair. But take a notebook with you. And when you're at a booth that you like, jot down the booth number, all the other information, and then jot down the time. Write the time down. And the reason is, is that your phone is going to label all of your photos with a timestamp. And if you're thinking, where was I? I mean, I remember that booth and they had the silly little quokkas that sat on your shoulder. We can go back. You see the pictures of them. And if you look at the timestamp, you'll now know which was that booth you took a picture of at the same time, and you'll be able to find it. And believe me, there are so many booths. It is so, so easy to get 
lost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got lost just being at the Prosper show, to be honest with you. And it's nowhere near the size of the Canton Fair. Um, Stephen, we're going to take another quick break. And then we want to hear more specifically about the trip that you're leading, taking folks to the Canton Fair, um, the dates and, you know, where they can find more information. So we'll be right back in just a second. Did you know that Amazon probably owes you money for FBA reimbursements? Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at katita.com slash sellernomics. All right, y'all. So be sure to go claim that 400 in FBA reimbursements free. Steven, we've talked a lot about the Canton Fair tips, tricks. I mean, this feels like a crash course in it. And this is like the guide to be successful at the Canton Fair. And I love it. Um, when is it? <laughs> is it tomorrow? <laughs> It's pretty close. It is. It occurs twice a year. It's biannual. It occurs in April and occurs October. Um, and each time it's spread out over three sessions that takes about three and a half, four weeks to get through. So uh, this one that's coming up in April starts April 15th with phase one. Um, then phase two begins the 23rd. And then phase three begins the last week of April into the beginning of May. Interestingly, right, right through their May Day celebration. That's how important doing business is to them. Um, it's in Guangzhou, China, which is the second or third largest um, city in, might even be the fourth largest city in China. Um, it's very easy to get to. It's got a major airport and so on. Right now, flights are more difficult. Hopefully that'll open up soon. But that's because during COVID, international airlines lost their rights throughout other air, uh, airports throughout the world. And then their airlines lost their rights in China. So right now everyone's leasing the extra space to each other and it, it's narrowed down their opportunity for flights, but there's lots there. If you have to, you can come through Hong Kong, but right now I suggest coming into Guangzhou. And I'm gonna do a little aside here. And the reason I say that is because even though China has opened up their borders, they do still have a requirement that you have a negative PCR COVID test within 48 hours of landing. So it's a lot easier if you fly into Guangzhou, you can make sure you get it done before before you leave wherever you're leaving from. Uh, so it's very, very easy. There's lots of hotels and the complex is right there um, on the Pearl River downtown, very easy to get to. Uh, it is during phase two, you'll find most products that you're selling on Amazon. And then some during phase three, particularly if you're doing apparel, as I said, or sporting equipment and so on. Uh, phase one, unless you're doing electronics, home electronics, consumer electronics, um, lights, uh, the rest of phase one is probably not as focused for you. It's got construction equipment. It's got car parts. It's got... Um, commercial industrial chemicals and so on machinery large machinery it's pretty cool but it's it's not what you're going to be selling yeah for sure so why don't you tell us uh how do they get a hold of you steven to find out more if they're interested in uh maybe attending with you and maybe clarify are they going with you are they meeting you there like what exactly are you offering what is not included in this uh canton fair 2023.com uh website Excellent. So what we did prior to um, uh, COVID with my partner, I'm now doing it myself with uh, Product Development Academy, is that we will be there um, and to guide you and support you and be at your side the entire time. So we're focused on phase two. People come in a few days before phase two. We have a day of classroom training. You at least had you had asked about negotiation. We actually go into that pretty deep in your role play and so on like that. Then we have a day of going to factories and behind the scenes at factories. Um, there we go. I'm going in out of focus, which is pretty cool. So you get to go behind the scenes of the factories. And this is important because it gives you the perspective of what your suppliers are seeing, what they need, what they're talking about. And it gives you the opportunity to have better conversations. And then... Um, we go to the fair itself each day, you know, whatever you need, text, I'll be there. I've got other people who are going to be there. They'll come to your side. Um, we also have uh, different experts in things from 
shipping to IP and so on that join your dinner times. And then that night, there's also um, uh, just basically group meetings, meetups. Um, and again, I'm there as well. So you can ask questions and so on. There is a few days between phase two and phase three. So what we're offering is also to go to a trip to EWU. EWU is the world's largest products commodities market. It's actually four times the size of the Canton Fair um, and is filled with tiny little boots, one after another after another. It is basically almost everything that you have seen that you can buy on Alibaba is right there in Iwu at those booths. It's it, in, in that case, going back to your question about Chinese, they don't speak English. But what you do is they'll set you up with a translator guide who will actually bring you to the areas of Iwu for the booths that you're looking for. Uh, four years ago, four years ago, April, was there with someone who was just, he's so aggressive, looking for product after product. And at, during a break, his guide left and she came back and she was wearing roller skates just so she could keep up. That's hilarious. So we go to Iwu and then we come back into phase three and it's the same thing that continues for the first three phase, three days of phase three. And then just because this is what I've always done and what we did prior to COVID, if you want to do factory visits, you've got me, I've got some engineers and other people we can you know, put together with you as you go visit factories on your own um, so that you can make deals. And I'm going to pause there for a second to say something really important. When you're there, go with certain goals. If your goal is to find things, you've got you know your funds set aside and you're going to make deals right there and then do it. Um, other people, myself included, our goal is to find things that interest us or find factories that interest us and follow up afterwards. When you can get back, when you can take some deep breaths, the excitement of everything is there and you can start analyzing each one of your products. Whatever tools you use, what are the scores for them? Uh, are the prices the right prices and so on? And then you can contact them. When you do, send them that selfie. You and the people in the booth with that booth number, they're going to know who you are. They're going to remember who you are. Um, and, and they're going to love that you followed up. Absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely. All right. Well, Stephen, please uh, give everybody the website. Uh, how do they get more information about this uh, amazing trip? And how do they get hold of you? Absolutely. It's cantonfair2023.2023.com. Cantonfair2023.com. You can find me at Stephen at Product Development Academy. Um, and if you're interested in other sort of stuff, expanding your your products and so on, productdevelopmentacademy.com is where you can find all that information. Um, but again, the simplest thing for the Canton Fair is just go to Canton Fair 2023. And I'll, I'll, there's an interesting video on that site. So of course, like everything else, everyone else, there's some quick videos telling you about mm -hmm. the Canton Fair. But if you scroll about two thirds the way down, I'd mentioned negotiation. And what I do as part of that is I will go with you um, I'll negotiate for products at the fair and you get to sit there and shadow me and see how it's done. And then later, if you need me to help you, I come on over and help you. But someone surreptitiously videotaped one of those sessions. So you can actually watch. It's about 20 minutes long. Terrible sound because it's live. It's real. <laughs> but you can actually see what it's like to really negotiate with someone who is a real factory owner, who has real products. And we chose two different products and we got a 10 point something and 11 point something multiplier. So these are profitable products. Just talking to them, we brought the price down 40%. And you get to see the whole thing that was videotaped wow. right in front of wow. you. Uh, how is this done? What to say and so on. So uh, hopefully that will be useful as so well. Oh, I'm going to say one other. Oh, it's great. One other thing I always forget to say. Guys, don't forget, talk to your accountant before you go, because this is a business expense. Whether you're going on your own, whether you're going there with friends, whether you're going with a group with me, I've got a couple of friends who are doing the other trip, going with them. Talk to your accountant first so you can make sure that you can deduct all of this. Otherwise, you're going to be kicking yourself afterwards, and that doesn't help anyone.
<laughs> I, I love that you immediately give value just on the website before even registering. And for anybody um, listening to the audio experience, Canton spelled C-A-N-T-O-N, similarly to how we spell Canton in Georgia. And I learned very quickly that's not how you pronounce the Canton Fair. Um, Stephen, thank you so much for coming on. This has been absolutely incredible. I, I can't wait to see all of the photos and hear all of the stories and the successful business deals that were made at the Canton Fair in, in coming weeks. We really appreciate your time. Excellent. It's so fun being here and I can't wait to see you guys in person again. Yes. Very, very excited. Thanks, Rob, any, anything you want to say before we sign off on your favorite episode? No, but I think, I think, <laughs> I think that somebody owes me a home baked pie. I pot. do. I do in July. I Ooh. promise. I promise. I will. I will not, I'm not traveling anywhere. You will have it. <laughs> you got it. Thanks Stephen. Thank everyone. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for joining us this week on the Sellernomics podcast. Special thanks to our sponsor, Gatita. Did you know that Amazon probably owes you money for FBA reimbursements? Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at gatita.com slash Sellernomics. Be sure to join us again next week for more great tips on how to grow your business. And thanks again for listening.